Welcome to episode two with Dr. Blomberg answering our four Easter questions. Now, Lace, do you know that Dr. Blomberg got his PhD from Aberdeen University in Scotland, and he specialized on Jesus's teaching in the parables in Luke's gospel. So if anyone's got the answers, it's going to be him. Well, question two is, why did Jesus have to rise from the dead? And did it even really happen? Well, let's go to Dr. Blomberg and hear what he's got to say. Had Jesus simply been crucified, executed by the Roman authorities and his body laid in a tomb to decay over time like all corpses normally do, then there would be no vindication for his life. His sacrifice would have been offered, but death would not have been conquered. The, the Christian message of the resurrection is that um, not only Jesus was raised, but all of his followers will one day be raised as what the Apostle Paul calls the first, that Jesus was the first fruits of our resurrection. Did it really happen? Well, you can point to things like every one of the four Gospels has women as the first witnesses and testifiers to an empty tomb and to a claim to having been told that he is risen, in some cases actually seeing Jesus, in a world where women were very much second-class citizens and often their testimony not admitted in a court of law, you wouldn't make up a story and have it work that way. In Judaism, someone who died on a cross, just like someone who was hanged from a tree, was deemed to be cursed by God based on Deuteronomy 21, 23. Within the first generation Christians, even some Jewish Christians began to worship on a Sunday, the first day of the week, according to the Jewish calendar, despite one of their 10 most fundamental commandments from Exodus chapter 20, saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What would permit, if not even encourage, such a, a transformation of one of the basic laws unless Jesus were actually raised on a Sunday. And yet, there's no tomb that's ever worshipped, as we see throughout the history of the world when great people lie in state and then remain buried. There's no veneration of a holy place where people say, here you can find Jesus' body lying in state, as it were. There's no description of the resurrection. There's only announcements of the aftermath when people see him. How did he get out? If you go to some of the later, more fanciful, apocryphal, and Gnostic Gospels, you can find legendary stories about that, but not in the canonical accounts. There's no Jewish expectation for a resurrected Messiah prior to the resurrection of all people, of all time and resurrection to eternal life of God's people. These are the kinds of arguments that, for me, are, are hard to get around. It seems more likely Jesus was indeed raised from the dead. Sure, Scotty, that was really helpful. And, and in Dr. Blomberg's answer, he really put forward the evidence for Jesus' resurrection. And I think evidence is a big thing that people are looking for. So what, using that, maybe what's a good question um, or conversation starter that will be helpful for us as we think about talking to others. Yeah, Lace, I'm glad you asked for a question because I really believe that rather than trying to give our friends information, it's always best to listen to them and start with a question. So maybe a simple question, a conversation starter, could be something like, if you were going to believe that Jesus rose from the dead, what kind of evidence would you be looking for? On the back of that and what we've heard from Dr. Blomberg, I reckon you'd be able to start a really great conversation yeah. this year at Easter.